Hello everyone, today we going to learn about life cycle assessment of beef cattle production, let's go. What is life cycle assessment? Is a cradle to grave or cradle to cradle analysis technique to assess environmental impacts associated with all the stages of a product's what is beef? Beef is the culinary name for meat from cattle. In prehistoric times, humans hunted aurochs and later domesticated them. Since then, numerous breeds of cattle have been bred specifically for the quality or quantity of their meat. Today, beef is the third most widely consumed meat in the world, after pork and poultry. The biggest beef producer is United States with 12.6 billion per year followed by Brazil, European Union, China, and India. Next is, beef cattle production in Malaysia. In 2019, the cattle production in Malaysia amounted to approximately 683.5 thousand heads. This indicates a slight increase from the previous year, although in the 10-year time frame, cattle production per head has been on the decline. Now let's learn about demand of beef production. Go go! Meat plays a pivotal role in this. Meat is an important source of nutrition for many people around the world. Global demand for meat is growing. Over the past 50 years, meat production has more than tripled. The world now produces more than 340 million tons each year. Per capita beef consumption is expected to grow slightly to 58.6 pounds per person in 2021, up from 58.5 pounds in 2020, although per capita red meat and poultry consumption is expected to decrease to 218.7 pounds per person from 221.7 pounds per person in 2020. Now here's some of the type of cattle breed. There are more than 250 breeds of beef cattle all over the world but most popular among these are Angus, Burham, Beef Master, Piedmontese, Herefordshire, Gel BA, and Limousine. But the most profitable is Angus, Highland Cattle and Hereford Cattle. Angus is the most popular breed of beef cattle. Their meat quality is excellent and they provide 50% of their weight in the meat. Then, Highland cattle meat is rich in nutrients and is very tender. They can survive in colder climates as their thick fur coat protects them from the cold. Their milk has higher butter fat content so they can also be used for milking. Hereford can survive in almost all climatic conditions. Their market demand is notably high and they are less expensive than Angus. The animals of this breed mature early and are more efficient than the rest of the breeds. Let's see how the life cycle of beef production works. First step is cow-calf from a ranch. Raising beef begins with ranchers who maintain a herd of cows that give birth to calves once a year. When a calf is born, it typically weighs 60 to 100 pounds. Over the next few months, each calf will live off its mother's milk and graze on grass pastures. Next is weaning. Calves are weaned from their mother's milk at 6 to 10 months of age when they weigh between 450 and 700 pounds. These calves continue to graze on grass pastures and may begin receiving a small amount of supplemental plant-based feed for extra energy and protein to help them grow and thrive. Third step is stocking and backgrounders. After weaning, cattle continue to grow and thrive by grazing on grass and pastures with ranchers providing supplemental feed including vitamins and minerals to meet all of their nutritional needs. After weaning and or during the stalker and backgrounder phase, cattle may be sold at livestock auction markets. And then, mature cattle are often moved to feed yards. Here cattle typically spend four to six months. They are free to graze at feed bunks containing a carefully balanced diet made up of roughage, such as hay and grass, grain, such as corn, wheat and soybean meal, and local renewable feed sources, more about that in the next section. Veterinarians, nutritionists and pen writers work together to provide individual care for each animal. After that, 
Once cattle reach market weight, typically 1,200 to 1,400 pounds at 18 to 22 months of age, they are sent to a packing plant, also called a processing facility. United States Department of Agriculture USDA, inspectors oversee the implementation of safety, animal welfare and quality standards from the time animals enter the plant until the final beef products are shipped to grocery stores and restaurants. Then the product will go through shipping and delivery to all over the world for consumer use. Now for the last part we're going to see the impact of beef production on biodiversity. It takes a lot of water to produce meat, and beef is the most water intensive food. It requires two times more water to produce beef than pork and four times more than alternative protein sources such as lentils. The issue is further compounded because soybean farming, for animal feed, is relatively inefficient when it comes to water usage. Livestock production also contributes to water pollution around the world because manure contaminates water courses. As the global cattle industry has expanded, the beef slaughter and leather industries have grown vigorously. When it is not properly treated, waste from slaughterhouses and tanneries, rich in organic matter, heavy metals and caustic solutions, is highly polluting without appropriate treatment. Raising animals often requires a lot of grazing land. However, the intensive nature of this grazing can lead to bare soil, which is then often lost due to wind or rain. As a result, fertile lands become barren, waterways become clogged, and there is an increased risk of flooding. Soil is also a large reservoir for carbon, absorbing it as plants and trees die. As oil is lost, it releases that carbon as CO2 into the atmosphere. Animal agriculture, deforestation, and other land use changes that reduce soil have been the second largest contributors to CO2 emissions globally. Ultimately, the factors that we've outlined so far contribute to climate change. According to the UN's Food and Agricultural Organization, the meat and dairy industry accounts for roughly 14.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions. As we explored in our post on reducing your carbon footprint, the link between carbon emissions and climate change is undeniable. The production of meat is, directly and indirectly, related to the loss of forests in South America. According to the WWF, beef and soy production are responsible for deforestation in the Amazon rainforest and other areas of Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay. Vast swathes of the Amazon are being cleared of habitat for cattle farming and the production of soybean for animal feed. Often, deforested areas are cleared using fire. This burning releases huge amounts of carbon dioxide CO2, into the atmosphere while also removing a CO2 sink. It's not just forests that are in danger from the meat industry. As land is repurposed to raise animals and grow soybean, many habitats are destroyed or impacted. Many species face extinction or are under threat due to the destruction of natural environments. Estimates suggest that around half of the planet's habitable land is used for agriculture, with roughly 77% of this used by grazing cattle, sheep, goats, and other livestock. In the conclusion, meat is an important part of heritage and identity. It's a cultural staple in many communities across the globe. But with a rising global middle class, societies are becoming meat obsessed. Nowhere else is this more prevalent than rich nations whose appetite for beef, pork and processed chicken have reached a tipping point. Commit to reducing your meat and dairy consumption by a few meals per week and tell five friends about your choice to find alternative proteins. Make fresh fruits and vegetables a bigger part of your diet. Buy sustainable or organic fresh produce whenever possible. Eating less.
less meat, more plants helps the environment. Thank you everyone and don't forget to subscribe and like, bye bye.